Welcome in. You're listening to Locked On Now NHL, local experts weighing in on the biggest stories on the ice. I'm your host, Kanani Stevens. Thank you for making Locked On Now your first listen every single weekday. We're going to recap all of the playoff action from Wednesday. But before we do that, all three games ended with home teams making the comebacks to get the win. None was bigger than the Rangers doing it to keep their season alive in last night's biggest game. The biggest game. The Rangers went down 2-0 to the Penguins and home, and it looked early like New York's season might be coming to an end as well in Madison Square Garden on Wednesday. Instead, the Rangers scored five goals in the last two periods and forced a game six back in Pittsburgh. Locked on Rangers looks back at the win to keep its season going for New York. Hey, what is going on, hockey fans? John Chick of Locked On New York Rangers. The Rangers just uh, concluding a just pulse-pounding, absolutely insane roller coaster of a game against the Pittsburgh Penguins. The Rangers win 5-3 to in Game 5 to stave off elimination and send this series back to Pittsburgh for Game 6 on Friday night. I think one of the biggest takeaways for me from this game is watching the kid line really just, uh, you know, come into their own right in front of our very eyes. I mean, Kako, Lafreniere, Hedl uh, playing some of the best hockey that they've ever played since joining the New York Rangers. And it's funny because... You know, the Rangers' lack of experience was something that was going to be maybe something of an issue in this playoff series. You know, that's a spot where the Penguins have the edge. And yet, some of the most inexperienced players for the Rangers, the three guys I just mentioned, also K. Andre Miller, uh, having big-time playoff series for this New York Ranger team. And Igor Shesterkin looking like he's back to his old self. And this is just a crazy game. I mean, who knows what's going to happen the rest of this series. But just the fact that the Rangers were down 2 nothing in this game late in the second period, looking completely dead in the water. And... You know, looking like this really might be the end. They might end their season with a complete whimper and end up just step on the gas, complete 180, three quick goals at the end of the second period. It's tied at three going into the third. And then uh, Philip Heedle coming up clutch for the Rangers on uh, the power play. And uh, Ryan Lindgren, huge, huge thing in this game was Ryan Lindgren being back in the lineup. He played a great game for the Rangers and he gets the empty netter. Could not happen to a better person and more deserving player uh, than Ryan Lingren at the end there. But we'll be discussing all this on the next episode of Locked On New York Rangers. Do not miss it. The Florida Panthers trailed by three at home in game five against the Capitals before scoring five straight goals and taking control of the first round series. Locked On Panthers and Capitals have both sides of a tale of two games in Florida. The Comeback Cats do it again. Playoff edition. What is up, guys? This is Armando Velez from the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. And the Florida Panthers defeat the Washington Capitals by a final score of 5-3 to three in regulation. And the Florida Panthers fell behind by three goals. Again, we've seen this five times this season where the Florida Panthers come back from a three-goal deficit and end up winning the game. This time, they do it in the playoffs. Many around the national landscape have questioned whether the Florida Panthers have the ability to co- have these comebacks in the postseason if they were to fall behind. Uh, by multiple scores and Carver Hagee with a five point night, two goals and three assists in this one. And Sergey Bobrovsky after letting, uh, after giving up three goals on his first 13 shots, not all of them were his fault stops. The last 20 shots that he faced against the Washington Capitals and many opportunities for the Washington Capitals on Sergey Bobrovsky and Sergey Bobrovsky shut the door for the Florida Panthers. And despite going O of 16, on the power play in this series, the Florida Panthers are still finding a way to score five on five and now have a three, two series lead. The first time that the Florida Panthers have had a series lead since 2012 against the New Jersey devils in their first round series. So right now the Florida Panthers now have one more game to break their 26 year postseason drought. It's right there for the taking game six is Friday night, seven 30 on TBS. So, so this is my recap of this 5-3 to three win over the Washington Capitals. Make sure to join me and Frank Rikus of PantherParkway.com as we break down this 5-3 to three win over the Washington Capitals. Hello, this is Dan Holmey from Locked On Capitals. Well, the Washington Capitals fall to the Florida Panthers in Game 5 by a score of 3-5. to five. This was one of the games that I talked about. This was a must-win game for the Washington Capitals. And they blew it. This was a game that they were ahead in the first period. And the momentum was really in their favor. And uh, they just took their eye off the ball. This Washington Capitals team has got to find a way to turn it around before it's too late. Caps coach Peter Laviolette on the 5-3 to three loss. There were two games 
that were played. There was the one game to push it to a three to zero where I liked everything we did, including the power play and the penalty kill and five on five play. And then there was the game that took place after that. So it was just all about a momentum thing. The Washington Capitals playing in Florida. Typically the Capitals have played well this season on the road, but the Capitals have got to find a way to turn it around. The Caps blew a three goal lead, allowing five straight goals and totally unraveled in the final half of the game. They trail the series three to two and are one game away from elimination. Keep it locked on to Locked On Capitals, and I will keep you updated on all the news on your Washington Capitals. Locked On Capitals, your team every day. And the Calgary Flames also trailed at home in Game 5 and also won in the end. Calgary used three goals in the third period to get the 3-2 advantage in the series, and Locked On Flames has no notes as they're feeling good going into Game 6. Well, the Flames are one game away from clinching this series against the Dallas Stars, and they can do that on Friday in Dallas. But tonight, Andrew Mangiapane had the game-winning goal in the comeback against the Dallas Stars as they did what the Flames do best, and that is come from behind and live up to their underdog status. Um, I don't even have words for them right now. I think that it was just such a great third period effort with 16 shots and uh you know Jacob Markstrom looked great the Flames give him a break through the first period and you know I just I can't say enough good things about this team so uh you know if you are rooting for this team and they are your bandwagon team Andrew Mangiapane is your way to go. Michael Backlund had a great game as well and you can always respect and show some love to the veteran presence and uh, I'll have you covered on tomorrow's episode of Locked on Flames. The Stars let Game 5 slip away at the end and now have to win two in a row to keep their season going. Locked on Stars tells you how Dallas blew a big chance on the road. The Dallas Stars had a golden opportunity to go up 3-2 to two in their first-round series against the Calgary Flames, but they squandered it with one of the most atrocious third-period collapses we've seen in this year's playoffs. Hey, everybody. Dane Lewis here with the Locked On Stars podcast coming to you after Game 5 of the Stars versus Flames series, a game that was dominated by the Stars in the first two frames. The Stars were playing lights-out defense, having the Calgary offense in a scramble to try to get anything going uh, as far as generating shots and generating looks. Calgary had 16 shots on goal through the first and second periods, but then things fell apart for the Stars in the third as Calgary had over 16 in the third period alone. I mean, the defense was an absolute mess in the third, and then once Calgary started applying the pressure, the Dallas Stars just kind of rolled over and died, which is something that we've seen from this team far too often this season. And, you know, it really came to fruition in this game. And and Dallas obviously struggling offensively, and we finally do see the emergence of Jason Robertson in this playoffs, but one goal from him is not going to be enough to beat a team like Calgary, and neither is Jake Ottinger doing his best. I mean, he can only do so much but when the offense isn't working and when the defense collapses the way it did in the third period with the lack of effort and with the lack of attention to detail you're going to lose games like that you're going to blow those one goal leads and that's exactly what we saw happen in this game the stars also go 0 for 3 on the power play three of the worst power plays that we've seen from the stars this season and just this postseason i mean they have absolutely no answer and I mean, it almost feels like too late. I mean, we're five games into the series and there's been little to no adjustments made. And so uh, it would be foolish of us to think that we're going to see any kind of adjustment on special teams on the offensive side for the remainder of this series. So we need to see changes on that front in the offseason. And it all starts with the coaching staff and then the personnel will work itself out from there. But we'll talk about this game in its entirety and what it means for the stars for the rest of the postseason and all the implications going forward on tomorrow's episode of Locked on Stars. And I can't wait to see you there. That's it for today on Locked on Now NHL. Thank you so much for making Locked on Now your first listen every single weekday. Make sure you check out Locked on NHL and your team's Locked on podcast, especially now during the postseason. I'm Kainani Stevens. This has been Locked on Now.